A blessed day, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us today in our 40 Days of Prayer Discipleship Session. I am Pastor Jovin Lim, the lead pastor of Ictus Dumaguete. Join me as we discover biblical truth, how to unleash the power of God through prayer. Now, before I will start, let me just encourage you. If this is your first time to be with us, please register in our 40 Days of Prayer campaign in the link provided in our description. And if you are already joining us and you missed part 1 and part 2, let me encourage you to do a replay. All the links are provided in our description. So beloved, I hope that all of us will continue to grow deeper in our intimacy with the Lord, especially during this time of pandemic, this time of crisis, and whatever you are going through in your life right now, this is the certain right time to really call upon the name of the Lord and discover more in our intimacy and in our rootedness in Christ Jesus. So now, let's open this with a word of prayer. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for this beautiful day that you have given us to learn from you, to hear from you, to worship you in everything that we will be doing, O God. And Lord, prepare our hearts now. Open our spiritual eyes. Open our spiritual ears. Open our hearts, O God, for the new learnings from your word that you will be delivering today. Holy Spirit, we acknowledge that you are our greatest teacher, so have your way now. We are excited to learn more and to do more for your glory and honor as we continue to follow Jesus as our master disciple. Thank you, Father. This is all we ask. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. So let's begin our session three of 40 Days of Prayer Discipleship. Rocks are known for their hardness and being strong. But rocks have no match with the strong waves in the ocean. When strong waves keep on striking the rocks, eventually they worn down, worn out. They crumble and give up. You know, it is also parallel to life. When you are battered by fears, worries, rejection, anger, and depression, or even shame, you eventually wear out. Jesus once said, we should always pray and never give up. What he is contrasting here is prayer and discouragement. If you continue to pray, God will give you the strength. But if you stop praying, you will be easily discouraged and will eventually give up. So the question is, how do you make it through life? So you can make it through prayer. So how do we pray? Jesus gave us the model of prayer. It's interesting that during the time of Jesus' ministry, the disciples saw him teaching, casting out demons, and doing a lot of miracles. They never asked Jesus how to perform miracles, how to cast out demons, or how to teach and preach powerfully. But when they saw Jesus praying, they asked him to teach them how to pray. You might be asking why of all things that they saw Jesus was doing, what they asked is to teach them how to pray. You know why? Because they saw Jesus praying and they witnessed that through prayer, God will unleash His power. In this part 3 of our 40 Days of Prayer Discipleship Lesson, we will be looking at the supreme model of prayer given to us by Jesus Himself. I hope that our hearts are also eager to learn and apply Jesus' model of prayer as we grow deeper in our relationship with Him. The title of our 40 Days of Prayer Discipleship session is The Pattern of Prayer, Part 1. When the disciples went to Jesus and asked to teach them how to pray, Jesus taught them the Lord's Prayer. You know, the Lord's Prayer is the most famous prayer in the Bible. And it became the most famous prayer in the world. But Jesus started with this in Matthew chapter 6, verse 9. This then is how you should pray. Now notice that Jesus did not say, this is what you should pray. Jesus said, this is how you should pray. Jesus' model of prayer is not some magic spell or incantation. It is not to be prayed as a mindless ritual. Instead, the Lord's Prayer is a pattern. It's a pattern for prayer. It's a model. You need to know this model because 
it addresses everything you need in life. If you know the model of prayer, you will know how to pray and what to pray for. So, let's begin by praying the Lord's Prayer together. And we will be discovering one point at a time to see what Jesus is teaching about prayer. So, let's begin by praying together aloud, together with me, Matthew chapter 6, verses 9 to 13, the Lord's Prayer. Let's pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Now, I want you to think about prayer as a pathway that is made up of 10 different steps. And each of these steps will lead you to a deeper and a closer relationship with God. So, we will go through in these 10 steps of prayer that Jesus modeled for us. And today, we will take up the first five steps. That's why it's called part one of the pattern of prayer. So let's now dig in to the five steps. And the first step is this. I will remember how much God loves me. It says, Our Father in heaven. That's the first phrase all about in the Lord's prayer. That's why we call this first part of prayer the prayer of connection. Connecting to your Father in heaven. It's all about relationship. Remember, beloved, that prayer does not start with what you need. Prayer starts with who God is. It will start in your relationship that God is your Father, that He is a caring Father, that He is a consistent Father. He is a close Father to you and a competent Father. It's about your foundation that in whatever situation you might be in right now, your God is a good, good Father. Again, beloved, let me repeat that. Prayer does not start with what you need. Prayer will always start with who God is. It's all about relationship. It says in Ephesians chapter 3, verses 17 to 19, May your roots go down deep into the soil of God's marvelous love. And may you be able to feel and understand as all of God's children should. How long, how wide, how deep and high His love is. And to experience this love for yourselves. Thought it great that you will never see the end of it or fully know or understand it. Beloved, let me ask you, how are you in your rootedness with your relationship with God? How's your intimacy with God? Are you growing bolder in your connection with God? Or are you becoming more disconnected with God lately? What are the things that become your detractors or barriers in building an intimacy and rooted relationship with our Heavenly Father? Beloved, I want to warn you today with two things. Be careful of the two detractors of your intimacy with God. What are these two major detractors in our life? Or probably it can become a barrier in our intimacy with the Lord. Number one is this, the burdens that you have. Because of the burdens, because of the problems, because of its heaviness, sometimes it overwhelms us emotionally, mentally, physically, and we got drained spiritually. So be careful and be reminded about it. Maybe it becomes your detractor in your building of intimate relationship with our Heavenly Father. The second one, beloved, is this. Blessings. We believe that all blessings come from God, but it can also become a barrier. It can also become a detractor if we focus on the blessings than the blesser. That's why, beloved, we need to be careful. 
in what area or in what season are you in right now? Are you in a season where there are a lot of burdens that is in your heart? Are there a lot of burdens that you are focusing right now? Beloved, the real question is, how are you with your relationship with God while you are having those kind of burden? And in the other side, maybe right now you're in a season where God is really so, so good. You know, blessings overflow and blessings are keep coming in. Be careful, beloved. You know why? Because probably right now, if you are focusing on the blessings, you forget the blesser and your intimacy is being affected, be careful not to be weakened. That's why today we're talking here about prayer because prayer is all about connection. Prayer is all about relationship so that we will not be drifted away from the burdens and even the blessings that we have. We need to anchor ourselves in our relationship, in our connection with God through our prayer and through God's word. It's my prayer that in this 40 days of prayer journey that we have, you can be built up, you can be rooted in your personal relationship with God. Don't let the burdens become your barrier. Don't let the blessings become your detractors in that intimate relationship that you have with the Lord. So beloved, we need to build our intimacy with God for it is His love that becomes our strong foundation in the prayer of connection. God must be our foundation. It's because of God's love that we can come confidently to Him through prayer. So, through that verse that we just read in Ephesians, let's remember four things about prayer through that verse. Number one is this. God's love is long enough to last forever. Amen? Number two, God's love is wide enough to embrace everything about you. And God's love is deep enough to pull you out in your deepest despair. And of course, God's love is high enough to overlook every offense that you commit. That's how long, how wide, how deep, and how, how high is God's love for you and me. That is why it's just so important that we need to build up our lives through the love of God that is through Christ Jesus, our Lord and Savior. Beloved, God wants you to experience that kind of love by growing your roots deeper and deeper by spending time with God. So, whenever we pray, we will start by remembering who God is and how much He loves you. Step number two, beloved, is this. I will tell God how much I love Him. This is what worship is all about. This is what Jesus meant when He gave us the second point in prayer. Hallowed be your name. We call this the prayer of refocusing. Now, follow me on this. Before you ask anything from God, you need to spend few moments in worship, focusing yourself on God and not in your problem. You can express your worship to God for who He is, how much He loves you, thanking Him for what He has done, and talking to Him by name. Now remember, God's name tells us who He is. And in Scripture, God is telling us that He is your Creator who made you. He is your Father who loves you. He is your Savior who forgives you. He is your shield who protects you from harm. He is your Counselor who gives you wisdom and guidance. He is your Comforter that gives you strength and help. He is your Shepherd who guides you. These are all names of God, and the Bible says He is the best friend you will ever have. He is patient. He is compassionate with you. He is faithful. He is kind. He is merciful and forgiving. And by this point in worshiping God through prayer, you can just stop for a moment and think about who God is. What is His character looks like? And take a minute to tell God how much you love Him and how much He means to you. When you think about God in all this way, it will give you great joy and delight to pray and to be in His presence. This is a heart preparation, beloved. Then after you worship Him and hallow His name, 
you thank God for what He has done in your life. Now think about this. How does God answer the prayers in your life? How does He meet your needs? Have you remembered in giving thanks for that? In Psalms 107 verse 15, Give thanks to the Lord for His unfailing love and His wonderful deeds for men. So beloved, when you thank God for what He has done, it will build your faith and prepare you for the request that you present to Him. That's the beauty when you worship God and give thanks for who God is and what He has done for your life. So let's go to step number three. I will offer my life to be used for God's purpose. Not for my purpose, not for my plans, but God's purposes and plans. And you can see this is in the next phrase of the Lord's Prayer. Your kingdom come. This is the prayer of cooperation. Now that you know that God loves you and you love Him, you are confident that God will reveal what He has in store for your life, all you need to do is to cooperate with Him and be confident that His answer to your prayer is for your own good. In Jeremiah 29 verse 11, I know the plans I have for you, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you hope and a future. This is the reason that we will start with prayer if we are seeking for hope, for revival, and renewal. Even when life is tough and confusing, even when you can't understand the trouble that you are going through, you can be confident that God is watching over you, that God is working everything out for your own good. Beloved, is your situation making you doubtful as if asking yourself, is it God's will or not? Does it give you a heart that makes you question His will and plan for your life right now? Maybe this is a high time for you to come into an alignment of who God is over your life. In Romans chapter 8, verse 28, we know that all that happens to us is working for our good if we love God and are fitting into His plans. Remember, beloved, that living for God's purpose is not just a one-time decision. It is a daily cooperation with God. It needs to be a daily commitment of the heart. When you pray and say, Your kingdom come, it means it's a daily surrender of your life in God's will and God's purposes and plan. Beloved, in Romans chapter 12, verse 1, in the message version, it says, so here's what I want you to do. Take your everyday, ordinary life, your sleeping, your eating, going to work, and walking around life, and place it before God as an offering. Beloved, through that verse, God is reminding us that we need to seek God's kingdom and His purpose in all areas in our life every day. Not once a week, not once a month, once a year, but every day, as you wake up and as you go to bed, we need to seek God's will, God's purposes daily. So step number four, beloved, is connected closely to number three, but this is more personal. Step number four is, I will give God my pain and sorrow. All the difficulties, all the hurts, all the pains in our life, Jesus is teaching us through His pattern of prayer to give all these things to God. We call this phrase the prayer of surrender. Jesus said, Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. That's a prayer of surrender. God, I want Your will in my life. I want it done on earth as Your will is done in heaven. Those are the kind of prayer of surrender. Beloved, God wants to comfort you in your grief. He wants to support you in your pain. He wants to give you strength when you are weak, discouraged, feeling defeated, in doubt, or if you want to give up. Now, you pray the prayer of surrender. And when you are hurting or sad, you pray, Lord, your will be done in my life. You know what, beloved? That's the prayer of Jesus on his way to the cross. 
in Mark chapter 14, verse 36, He called our Heavenly Father, Abba, Father, everything is possible for you. Take this cup from me, yet not what I will, but what you will. In this verse, we can observe that Jesus was practicing what He was teaching. We need to pray the prayer of surrender like Jesus did. The hardest thing in life to surrender is our will. That's why Jesus modeled it to us to let God's will be done in our life. Now, let me ask you a personal question. Are you having a hard time to surrender a will or control over a situation in your life right now? How does it affect your relationship with God? How does it affect your relationship with other people? Beloved, if you are struggling in surrendering it because of the pain and hurt, remember that Jesus modeled it for us how to surrender everything we have from the deepest part of pain and suffering that He experienced on the way to the cross. Jesus modeled it for us, beloved. You know, all of us, have our Gethsemane moment. We have different pains and hurts that we are going through in life. But Jesus taught and modeled for us what to do in this kind of season. All we need to do is to let go and let God take over. Amen? Again, we need to let go and let God take over all those sorrows, all those pain, all those hurts all those frustration that you are facing right now. Beloved, let go and let God. Amen? Now, let's go to step number five. Step number five is, I will trust God to meet all my needs. We call this the prayer of dependence. When Jesus said, give us this day our daily bread. At this point, You've told the Father that you love Him. You already told the Father that you surrendered to Him. Now, you are ready to present to Him all your requests. Tell Him about the things that you need in your life right now. Tell Him about the challenges that you are facing today. Tell Him about the fears and worries that are attacking you. Beloved, let me ask you, what is your need right now? This phrase, give us this day our daily bread, that bread represents all the things that you need in your life. All you need to do now is just to be real and sincere before God and open up what you really need. So let me ask you again, what is your need right now? You can actually pray to God with an open heart. In Philippians chapter 4, verse 19, it says, my God will meet all your needs. Again, my God will meet all your needs. What is God requiring? All He need and from us is to open up and just say and tell Him what we really need right now. Beloved, also remember that God will give only what's best for you. For sure, He will give you what you need, but not all that you want or dream. He will assure you to give what's best for you, and He knows it. There might be things that you think it's really good, but if the Lord says that it will destroy you, He will not give it to you. God wants you to learn and depend upon Him daily. That's why in His prayer, He says, Give us this day our daily bread. Remember this, beloved, God wants total dependency from us daily. And He wants to provide our needs daily. So one day at a time. Beloved, are you rushing because of the needs that you have right now in your life? Are you struggling right now because you need that certain amount of money? You need this for your family. You need this material thing. You need this for your work. You, did, you need this for your business. Do you have those kind of prayers right now and it's keep on bubbling in your mind and it's keep on coming in in your heart and sometimes you cannot wait upon God's answer? Beloved, remember, 
God wants to meet all your needs, but He wants total dependency from you. And He wants to provide it one day at a time. Beloved, in Matthew chapter 6, verse 34, it says, Do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about itself. Each day has enough trouble of its own. Beloved, through this verse, God is reminding us to trust and depend upon Him one day at a time. So, we discovered now the first five steps of the ten steps in Jesus' pattern of prayer. So, beloved, it is my prayer that as we continue to grow slowly in our prayer life, we can also grow by praying these five steps in our personal devotional time and personal prayer time with our Heavenly Father. So, beloved, as we close, let's apply in praying these five steps that we have. I will model it for you. You can join me in praying. And also, it's my joy, it's my prayer that you can also do this in your personal prayer time. Join me now as we close in a prayer and let's apply in praying these five steps that we discovered today. Let's bow down our head and let us pray. Our Heavenly Father, You are our Abba Father. You are our good, good Father. And Lord, thank You so much for giving us this reminder that we need to rekindle and remember how much You love us. Thank You so much for Your love. Thank You for sending Your Son to die on the cross to cleanse us and to save us. Lord, thank you for your agape love, your unconditional love. And it is our prayer that we can continue to grow deeper and deeper in your name. Lord, we acknowledge that you are our Heavenly Father who loves us so much and our life is in you. Hallowed be your name, Abba Father. Lord, thank you also for reminding us that we need also to express our love for you as you love us. You want also to hear what our heart is telling, what our heart is feeling right now. Now that we know how much you love us, you want us also to express our love and gratitude in your presence. That's why today, we just want to thank you. We just want to shout it out with all our heart that we love you so much, Abba Father. Thank you again for your love. And because of your love, we can also love back and obey you with all our heart. Thank you, Abba Father, and thank you for Jesus who demonstrates that kind of love. Abba Father, your kingdom come. Lord, thank you also for giving us this reminder today that, Lord, we need to offer everything, all, our, all areas in our life, from our finances, from our dreams, from our desires, from our ambitions, from our studies, job, business, family, and even our future. Thank you so much, Abba Father, that today we declare your kingdom come, O oh God, in our life. Let your plan and purposes be fulfilled in our lives. Father, thank you so much for giving us this wonderful reminder that everything is in your hands. Lord, we also pray to you now, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Thank you, Abba Father, for giving us that reminder that we need to just let go and give to you all our pain, all our sorrows, all our hurts, and even the crisis that we're feeling right now, that we are experiencing right now, all the depression, all the stresses in life. And we thank you, Abba Father, for giving us this reminder that starting today, what we can do is pray your will be done on earth as it is in heaven and we will be releasing in your presence and letting it go all the pains and sorrow that we have in our life thank you abba father and lord today thank you so much for this pattern of prayer give us this day our daily bread lord we have many different needs right now. For some, the needs are emotional. For some, it's physical healing or strength. For some, it's guidance and wisdom. And for some, is spiritual revival and renewal. 
Abba Father, we acknowledge today that you are our Jehovah Jireh, our great provider. Whatever needs that we have in all areas in our life, Abba Father, we just want to come before you and we would like to trust you that you will meet and supply all our needs. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you so much for being the bread of life that whoever believes in you, whoever comes to you, will never go hungry again, will never thirst again because your love is overflowing. Abba Father, thank you so much for giving us these five reminders today. And thank you so much for giving us a time where we can just slow down, think about who you are and what you have done for our lives. Thank you, Jesus. And thank you for this time where we learn together as a family. It is my prayer, Abba Father, that whoever listen and whoever watch this discipleship session that we have, empower them and bless them. Let your blessings overflow in their lives so that as they become blessed, they can also become a blessing to other people. Abba Father, we just want to honor you and we just want to bring back all the glory, all the praises and honor. And this is all we ask. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Beloved, thank you so much for praying with me in these five steps. And next week, we will be learning together the last five steps in Jesus' pattern of prayer. It is my prayer and desire that you will apply this from now on. Every time you pray, pray this prayer. Pray these first five steps and it will change the way you pray every day as you grow continually stronger and deeper in your intimate relationship with God. Thank you so much again for joining us today. Stay safe and stay strong, beloved. God bless you. Hello there. Please take a minute for these announcements. We invite you to journey with us in our 40 days of prayer campaign. It is open for everyone and we encourage couples, family, group of friends and individuals to join us as we start on August 16, 2020. For registration, please contact 0927-459-3750 or you can send a message in our Facebook page. Join us in our online Sunday worship service every Sunday at 10 a.m. via our Facebook page or YouTube channel. Join us in our midweek worship service every Wednesday at 7 p.m. via our Facebook page or YouTube channel. If you have prayer requests, contact 0927-459-3750 or message us in Facebook. Discover your God-given purpose in God's family. For more information, contact 0917-187-3183 or message us in Facebook. Life must not be lived out alone. Experience following Jesus Christ with other disciples. For more information, contact 0917-187-3183 or you can send a message in our Facebook page. Express your worship through giving. Give through the BPI mobile app. If you have a BPI account, you can install the BPI mobile app on your mobile device and simply scan through the QR code. You can give through PayPal. Simply scan the QR code. You can also drop your tithes and offerings at our center or have it picked up at your desired location. Please send us a message for more info. Thank you for your time. Have a blessed day.